sorry about all that. Um, I'd like to recommend the burger of the day, the If Looks Could Kale burger. <laughs> yeah, you get it? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you're not laughing. I don't think you got it. If looks Could Kale. Yeah, I, I got it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the If Looks Could Kale burger from Bob's Burgers. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not the cruciferous leafy vegetable I know and love as kale. And that's true. What we've got here is Swiss chard. But that's because I got a bonus Bob's Burger up my blouse. Before we can do that, the first ingredient of any Bob's Burger is the burger. We know that he grinds his own beef and that he uses high-quality ingredients. So I'm going to prepare my preferred burger blend out of this chuck roast, which is a great all-around cut for burgers in general, but I'm going to augment its flavor and fat content with this brisket and the short ribs. The brisket and short ribs are easy enough to trim, but the chuck has a lot of sinew and connective tissue in it, which we're going to want to trim off by pulling apart the lobes of the beef, making these less desirable bits easier to get to and remove. The short ribs and brisket, likewise, we want to get rid of any silver skin, but we want to keep a fair amount of fat. Once we're all trimmed up, we're cutting all of our meat and fat into one-inch cubes that we're going to throw in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes until firm before passing through through a thoroughly chilled meat grinder. Now I like to grind each type of beef separately so I can control the ratio. Two parts chuck to one part each, short rib and brisket. But at the end of the day, that truly doesn't matter because you're grinding your own beef and it's gonna taste better than anything you can get at the store. When mixing the beef together, take care not to overwork it, but you don't want it to be too crumbly either. I'm measuring out third pound balls that I'm shaping into patties. Patties with sort of little walls around the outside, so as J. Kenji Lopez Alt puts it, they look like red blood cells. This is going to prevent the burgers from puffing up too much in the middle as they so often do during the cooking process. Now it's time to stick those in the fridge so as we can prepare our kale, which we're going to wash, pat as dry as possible, and remove the stems. Then I'm going to toss them in a mixture of one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon kosher salt, and a quarter cup of light olive oil. Normally I would advocate for fresh garlic, but on kale it can easily gather into clumps and or burn. Once tossed until evenly coated, we're going to spread this out on a rimmed baking sheet and toss in a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, flipping halfway through, yielding some delicious garlicky crispy kale chips, as yet the only known way to rob kale of its nutritional value while making it semi-pleasant to eat. With our kale crisped up and ready to go, it's finally time to prepare our burger. First, I'm going to toast up my bun in a little bit of oil on a ripping hot cast iron skillet. Bob strikes me as a bun toaster. Before cranking the skillet pretty much as hot as it will go, plopping down our burger on a little bit of fresh oil, and only now seasoning with kosher salt. Now, as soon as we've got a sear and we flip this guy, I'm going to immediately top it with some Gruyere cheese. Then to help melt the cheese, we're going to give the pan a little squirt of water and cover it with a pot lid which I would advise caution in doing if you're using a gas stove. Now that the cheese is melted and the fear of God is freshly in your heart, we're making sure to turn off the flame before creating any other billowing clouds of highly flammable aerosolized oil, placing our burger on its toasted bun with a big pile of crunchy kale. And there you have it, the If Looks Could Kale Burger inspired by the Bob's Burgers cookbook. Let's take a look at that cross section. It's been a while since I've said it's been a while since we've had a cross section on this show. That is overcooked, but thanks to our fatty blend of flavorful beef, it's still plenty juicy. And to Despite being 10 to 30 degrees over target temperature, it still entered the clean plate club. And I know this is a weird time to say it, but Jess and I are trying to eat less meat. And another burger from Bob's Burgers gave me an idea for a veggie version. Well, uh, the burger of the day is the uh, chard to a crisp burger. What the hell is that? Oh, it's a, a burger with Swiss chard on it. I was just having fun with it. Look at you, Mr. Creative. No, a little bit. What was your name again? Uh, Bob. Bob! Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking... Uh, yeah, I already did this. But hey, that's why the chard is here on the on the table. Chard isn't just healthy and rather striking to look at. My thinking here is that the stalks of the chard could bring some nice beef-like color to our patty, which, like so many veggie burgers, is going to be black bean-based. The other thing that's got me stoked about this idea is the idea of deep-frying the burger, giving both more meaning to Bob's pun, chard to a crisp, and having the fringe benefit of probably tasting pretty good. So I'm starting by sautéing five finely chopped stems of Swiss chard, just in a hot pan with some oil for a minute before adding half a small chopped onion. Go ahead and saute those together for five to eight minutes or until nice and soft. Add a clove of chopped garlic. Saute for an additional 30 some odd seconds or until fragrant. Season with kosher salt and drop the mixture along with one 14 ounce can of rinsed and drained black beans into a food processor. Pulsing and scraping down the side of the bowl until it's relatively smooth, but it still has a little bit of texture. Speaking of which, we're going to add 
one cup of cooked and cooled brown rice, two tablespoons nutritional yeast, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, one teaspoon smoked paprika, and a quarter teaspoon cumin, mixing until distributed. You know, like ground beef, but healthier and beanier. Season with kosher salt, mix it up, and normally this is where I'd tell you to start forming patties, but this is indeed my first ever veggie burger, and it's missing some important elements, as I would soon find out. I was thinking a fast, hot fry and one inch of 350 degree Fahrenheit oil would both make the burger crisp and help it retain its structure, but it did neither. In the end, I was able to barely keep the patty together, and it kind of looked the part, and it tasted pretty good too, kind of southwestern. But, and I'm sorry that this is not in focus, as you can see, not exactly a texture I would call burger-like or worth eating. So we're back to the drawing board, adding one large egg white and a quarter cup of plain breadcrumbs, which is going to help give a great deal of structure to our patties. Depending on your mixture, you might need to put these in the fridge to firm up a little bit, but on my end, these guys are ready to head over to the stovetop, where I'm going to cook this thing just like a normal burger. The deep frying didn't seem to have any effect on the crispness of the burger, and even though we added breadcrumbs, that might help. I just wanted to see if I could make a functioning veggie burger at the end of the day. So we're going to top this guy up with our kale, just like the other burger, top it up, and serve. And it kind of looks the part. Maybe a little vegetal. Let's take a look at that cross section compared to the beef burger, which, uh, yeah, it's definitely not beef. But does it taste good? And since I just ate a whole burger, here's Jess to taste test it. So, darling, what do you think? That's definitely not beef, but I really like it. You know what I call it? What do you call it? The Kabin Abdul Jabchard. You know, because of Kareem Abdul. Okay, I deserve that.